Now I'm really happy to present to you my study under supervision by Dr. Shirin Makshang and Dr. Nhu Trang Trần Thị. As you may know, mangrove are forest of shown tolerant tree growing in the shallow tidal water of Atory and coastal area in tropical and subtropical region. Mangrove cover low to 140, 40,000 square kilometer, it tend over latitudinal friend from the north to south as a result of extraordinary high ray of uh, high uh, high ray and uh, low uh, and environment of low environment uh, low energy. Mangroves are characterized by high organic matter and high clay content in soil. For most actually, the mental objects metal to their system are riverine, particulate, and discern material. They can come ori originate from the natural shock or human activities. However, ethylene water are characterized by strong gradient in the physical, physical chemical parameters such as salinity, density, low velocity, and subender matter composition by mixing up the river and sea water. That may induce different biogeochemical process and then may affect the trace metal distribution and partitioning in the estuary. In addition, when entering the rocket water, but five particles can be deposited into the mangrove sediment due to decrease in flow velocity, and hence mangrove can be a sink of trace metal. However, different redox in process in sediment due to influence of season, tide, diversity of plant species, trace metal bearing fire can be discerned and then the sun metal can spark to the mangrove tidal rig or river and sea. And some of the sun metal can accumulate into mangrove biota. As a consequence, mangrove can be a metal shock for adjacent ecosystem. Regarding the study area of my thesis, Cần Giờ Mangrove is located in the south of Vietnam and at the southeast of Ho Chi Minh City. This is a biggest industrial city in Vietnam with more than 10 million inhabitants. And Cần Giờ Mangrove uh, Forest is now largely dominated by mainly Rhizophora abiculata, with fringing by mainly Avicennia toward the Rick River and the sea. And this actually is the downstream of Sairong and Dong Nai River and is a unit spray for the rainage of sewage from the land to the sea. There's a lack of the publication on trace metal within the mangrove forest. With our knowledge, only, there are only two publications on trace metal with some inside bringing the mangrove, including Tadi 2017 and Costa Bodica 2016 because of their position bioaccumulation and persistent and uh, toxicity, a better understanding the fact of trace metal in Gangyo Mangrove is required. For my BT thesis, the main objective was to understand the siling of some trace metal in the Gangyo Mangrove forest. And to reach our objective, we sequentially answer some questions concerning to the main factor controlling trace metal partitioning in ethylene water, main parameter controlling trace metal in partitioning in mangrove sediment and transfer of trace metal from mangrove sediment to mangrove biota. And the last answer concerning to, to answer the main driver controlling trace metal is part from the mangrove sediment to the rig. For the first question, we focus on trace metal partitioning between particulate and the sun phase along the Kung Yeo estuary. To reach our objective, surface water and subender matter sample were collected at four sites along the Kung Yeo estuary. With site one characterized by human and member, site two by aquaculture activity, site three covered by mangrove tree only, and site four, the mouth of the estuary in order to take into account the horn tidal siling 
the, therefore the sampling will carry, will carry out every two hours during 24 hours um, of tidal cycle, and we will also interesting the potential effect of seasonal on the effect of jet metal. Therefore, the sample will collect during dry and wet season. The spatial temporal variation of physical chemical parameters, such as salinity, BS, and the sun oxygen, was continuously clocked in situ. For laboratory analysis, the sun metal concentration was directly analyzed on ICBMS, and particular metal concentration was analyzed after they get it with concentrated nitric acid and hydrolysis acid. For particulate organic carbon and the sun organic carbon was analyzed on the CMSU TOCL. For the main result, the salinity was strong gradient at site one, varied from zero to two during the rainy season, and varied from seven to 12 during the dry season, the very low the very low salinity at site one during the rainy season, whatever the time, were attributed to the intense rainfall in increasing uh, fresh water inflow and limiting saline intrusion. Consequently, site one characterized the river, river and member during rainy season and mid estuary during dry season. In addition, the water delivered to the estuary at site one during the rainy season was rich in organic matter and oxid and slight acidic condition. Particular organic carbon concentration decreased along the salinity gradient, but not slightly. This distribution pattern could result both from seawater dilution containing lower content of particular organic carbon and from the composition of organic matter during its transfer in the estuary. The low the sun oxygen SH1 during the rainy season was may be associated to the composition of particular organic carbon and the low BS SH1 during the rainy season could be resulted from the mixing of Saigon and Dongnai River with the low BS due to the leaching from the acidic sulfate soil and made probably from the composition of organic compound. This research implied that the strong anthropogenic pressure on the mangrove ecosystem. Furthermore, the water at site one during the rainy season was rich in trace metal and elevated concentration of particular copper, chromium, and nickel con coincide with the high particulate organic matter as reverse observed in the Saigon River by study 2017, suggesting that the organic matter may be an important factor affecting the metal distribution and partitioning in the estuary. And we suggest that during the rainy season, heavy rainfall induced the increased runoff and soil leaching. That resulted in hand trace metal in both to the estuary, both in particular and the sun phase, for example, of iron here. We suggest the main factor controlling trace metal partitioning along the estuary in blue, total suspended solid organic matter, oxygen and BS chain and physical mixing between riverine and marine seawater marine water. To accept the run of total suspended solid on this metal transfer, a total metal concentration in the volume of the water were calculated. In this figure, with the vertical axis representing total metal concentration and horizontal axis representing total suspended solid, they presented strong positive correlation together, whatever the element. The research evident that the total surrender solid acted as the main carrier of trace metal during the transfer along the estuary. Regarding the physical missing of the river and seawater, it's a work case for nickel during the dry season. You can see on the figure 
particular in nickel and the sun nickel concentration degrees along the salinity gradient in order in order to better understanding the interaction of trace metal between particulate and the sun phase in the etory, the partitioning coefficient were calculated. It's it defined as the ratio of particulate metal concentration to the sun metal concentration. And we can see here the locating nickel were table along the salinity radian infer that nickel is poor reactive in the etory. However, the variation of total surrender solid and physical missing does not explain on the top variability of trace metal distribution in the etory. Organism matter appear to play a key role for trace metal distribution along the etory. And especially for chromium, you can see on this finger, particular chromium conjugation presented positive correlation with the particular organic carbon imply that the organic chromium have a high affinity with the organic matter in the estuary. And here, particular chromium concentration degrees along the salinity gradient may have resulted, may have resulted from the seawater dilution containing lower container particular chromium and make from the disruption of chromium from the but organic matter during its transit in the etory. We also suggest we also observe that the sun chromium concentration increase along the salinity radiant. And it, for our hypothesis concerning disruption of chromium from the organic matter during its transfer in the etory could be supported by the release of locality rhomium with the increased salinity associated with the positive correlation between locality rhomium and particular organic carbon and associated with the negative correlation between locality rhomium and dissolved oxygen. In contrast to uh, bromium, the sun manganese degrees along the salinity gradient. It was suggested to research from manganese oxidative precipitation as oxyhydroxide onto solid phase due to increase of the oxygen and BS. Our hypo this hypothesis could be supported by positive correlation between locality, manganese, and salinity associated with positive correlation between locality, manganese, and the sun oxygen and BS. And in summary of this concept concerning the trace metal partitioning between particulate and the sun phase along the Gangya as follow. The monsoon induced increased metal input to the etory. Total surrender solids were the main trace metal carrier during their transit in the etory. Manganese chromium were highly reactive. The sun oxygen or organic matter play in a key role in their dynamic. And mangrove, mangrove sediment can act as a natural biogeochemical reactor and may induce modification of trace metal partitioning after their deposition in mangrove sediment. Therefore, in, the, in this context, we focus on trace metal geochemistry in Gangya mangrove sediment. The main objective was to investigate the distribution and the partitioning of some trace metal in mangrove sediment. To reach our objective, three core was respectively collected in the mud flat in the Avicenia stand and in the Rhizophora stand at low tide. Pore water were also collected for analysis of the sun metal concentration and the physical chemical parameters such as salinity, BS, and trade-off potential were also measured in situ. 
This finger presenting depth evolution of pH redox potential salinity and total organic carbon in the mudslot to the from the mudslot to the rhizophorus stand, especially total organic carbon in the rhizophora were higher than those measured in the Avicennata stand and the mudflat. And this research may related to higher productivity of rhizophora, including a more developed root system. And we suggest the different content of total organic carbon induce different redox potential in the sediment cost, characterized by Suboxid to anoxic condition. And we also suggest that organic rich mangrove sediment may influence stray metal partitioning in the sediment. To evaluate geochemistry and availability of trace metal in sediment, a sequential extraction procedure was carried out beyond the method developed by this year. 1979, its elements were divided into four oper operationally defined geochemical fractions, including exchangeable carbonate bow, iron manganese, OC hydroxide bow, organic bow, and the last one, residue fraction. For the main research, objects metal in the sediment that is worth low to mean trace metal concentration in sediment were low to those of the rust and also low to those measured in the suspender matter in the Kangya mangrove and was high proportion in the residue fraction. We suggest that despite being downstream of the developing mega city characterized by blue urban wastewater treatment and the Trace metal accumulation in the mangrove sediment was relatively limited. We consider that the main source of trace metal in Kangyo mangroves is was natural and originated, originated from the Saigon and Dong Nai River. What is it composed of lateritic soil, mainly of sea hydroxide. And after being decomposed into mangrove sediment, of sea hydroxide can be dissolved by bacteria activity under suboxid and an oxid condition during organic matter decomposition. And the sun metal and then the sun metal in pore water can be can precipitate on new bearing phase such as organic matter, sunfish or carbonate. Some the sun metal can export to the tidoric or water tidoric or river or the ocean. And some of the sun metal in pore water can accumulate into mangrove biota. This finger presenting the profile of the sun iron and manganese in mangrove pore water. We can see the sun iron and manganese concentration beneath the Avicennia and the rhizophora and were lower than in the mud flat. This research may relate to the recipitation of the sun trace metal on new bearing phase and man mangrove biota uptake or export to the adjacent area. For recipitation of trace metal on new bearing phase, organic matter is most of important factor bearing phase for trace metal partitioning in sediment. And we can see a main trend from the mudslot to the rhizophora is an increase in the proportion of trace metal in the organic fraction associated with the increase in the residue fraction. This phenomena implies that the trace metal have a high affinity with the organic matter. And we suggest that the release of total organic carbon with depth may affect the trace metal partitioning, especially for iron. The sun iron can precipitate a soon fit, and it can be reflected by the increase of iron in the residue fraction at depth within the rhizophora stand. Unfortunately, we were not able to measure 
neither the total sun fur nor sun fit in the study mandro sediment in this context. However, it is no that the mandro forests are characterized by high rate of the sun phase reduction. And if elevated content of sulfur and pyrite are commonly observed in the mangrove forest, a reverse observed in New Caledonian mangrove by Machan and Noen. In contrast to Edison iron, manganese sulfur are unstable. And we can see high proportion of manganese in exchangeable carbonate bowl in the mudslat and the rhizophora, this result may be attributed to, firstly, in the result of the design in organic carbon resulted from reduction of organic matter degradation, carbonate mineral can be formed. And secondly, because of the similar ionic body, manganese can substitute calcium in its carbonate mineral. And finally, in summary of the content on trace metal geochemistry in Cần Giờ Manro sediment, it follows. Later, it is choice as mentioned of trace metal in Cần Giờ Manro sediment. And the residual function were the major geochemical phase of trace metal. And trace metal partitioning was strongly linked to organic matter styling. And because of the variable redox condition, trace metal in sediment may be, can be more or less available and can be uh, subject to the mangrove biota uptake. In this context, therefore, in this context, we focus on trace metal accumulation in plants and snail in the Kangya mangrove. The main objective was to evaluate the transfer from the sediment and the accumulation of some trace metal in the tissue of Avicenia and Rhizophora species, and to assess the effects of habitat and dietary habits on metal bioaccumulation in snail. To evaluate trace metal accumulation in plant, different samples, including roots and bleeds of sapling and matter were collected. We noted that the root sample were collected in the upper 50 centimeter in the sediment. And to assess the bioaccumulation bio of trace metal to the mangrove plant tissue, bioconcentration factor were calculated. It identifies ratio of the metal, mean metal concentration in the tissue to mean metal concentration in the sediment and to access the general location of trace metal from the root to the leaf. General location factor were also calculated. It's a defined ratio of metal concentration in leaf to metal concentration in root. This table representing mean metal concentration in roots and leaves of Avicenia and Rhizophora, we can see whatever the plant tissue, with the absorption of the manganese, most of trace metal presented higher concentration in the roots than in the leaf. And notably, iron and manganese is highly more abundant in, trace, in concentration than other trace metal in on roots and leaf of on type of tree species. For iron, despite low bioconcentration factor, the iron were the most abundant element in plant tissue, and the research may relate it to the high iron concentration in the sediment and poor water. We suggest that the information of iron lake queue on root by oxygen released in rhizosphere may be a main factor preventing iron chain location to the area park. As a result of high iron amount in roots associated with low chain location factor, the roots can be considered as the iron phytoturbidizator as reverse observed by Machado and Chohuri. For iron, whatever, uh, whatever the plant species, Iron were the second abundant element in the plant tissue, 
and in contrast to iron, manganese, the dominated in the leaf. And we suggest that the enhanced bioavailability in the, the sediment and pore water of manganese was responsible of the elevated concentration of manganese in the plant tissue. Because the high chain location factor uh, of manganese were already reported for rhizophora as rivers observed in New Caledonian mangrove by Machan 2016, we suggest that high manganese concentration in bleed may relate to metabolic requirement. And a consequence, the bleed can be considered as manganese phyto extractor. To evaluate trace metal accumulation in the snail for a species of snail with different uh, feeding regime were collected in Avicenia and Rhizophora, including Chicorius as a predator, Ceritaria as a sediment eater, and Little Raria as leaf eater, and Nerita as a micro energy eater. This uh, table presenting mean trace metal concentration in uh, different snail and in Kangya mangrove, whatever snail species, we can see iron, manganese, and copper. Its habitat is more abundant in concentration than other chai metal. Uh, and notably, for the littoraria and seritaria, they resented higher concentration in the rhizophora than in the avicenia, with the absorption with up manganese and coban. And we suggest that the different metal amount in the food stock and feeding habits of snail affect the degree and extent of trace metal accumulation in their tissue. For seritaria a sediment ester, it's resented the higher metal concentration in the rhizophora than those metal in the avicenia with the exception of manganese and coban. And this research may relate to the high metal concentration in a viable fraction in the sediment beneath the rhizophora stand than though in the Avicenia stand. And for this concerning Littoraria as a leaf eater being collected from Avicenia matter and rhizophora sapling, Littoraria collected in the rhizophora presented higher metal concentration than in the Avicenia, and this research may relate to the higher metal concentration in blee of the rhizophora sapling than those measured in the Avicenia matter. And in summary of this context, mangrove root acted as barrier preventing iron chain location to an area park, and rhizophora tree presented high potential for manganese phyto extraction. And this foreign food stock and feeding habits affect the degree and extent of trace metal accumulation in snail tissue. For the last question concerning the what are the main driver controlling trace metal is part from the mangrove sediment to the tidal rig. In this context, we focus on trace metal dynamics in the Kangya mangrove tidal rig. And the main objective was to determine the variability of trace metal a concentration in a tidal rig as a function of time and season, and to determine the partitioning of trace metal between particulate and dissolved phase during tidal cycle. To reach our objective, surface water and suspender matter sample were collected every two hours during 24 hours of nip and ring tidal cycle during dry and wet season. The physical chemical parameter such as salinity, BS, and dissolved oxygen were continuously measured in situ. As a raw water tracer, and it is due to quantify the relative contribution of pore water exchange, radon was also measured during the wet season. For the main research, dissolved manganese and dissolved iron concentration at low tide during nip and ring tidal cycle uh, during dry and wet season were 
far higher than those measure in at the blood type and the research was also higher than the measure in the Gengye mangrove estuary. Therefore, the contribution of other sugar of manganese and iron to the tidal rich was suggested. As a noble gas, radon originates from sediment and not in ruin by geochemical process. It is used to quantify the relative co contribution of poor water seepage exchange. Considering the, the positive correlation between the sun manganese concentration and the sun iron concentration and radon, if it does that, the sun increase up the sun iron and manganese during the ebb tide in the tidal rift were exported from the mangrove sediment through the pore water sea bay. As observed in the Australian mangrove by Holloway 2016. In addition, the sun manganese concentration presents a positive correlation with the sun organic carbon. The research implied that the organo, organo manganese complex may be formed during the sun manganese transfer, and we suggest that the rough up located manganese at low tide may result from the increasing the sun manganese from pore water. For iron, the correlation was that uh, between the sun iron concentration and radon were less than the one between the, the sun manganese and radon, considering the, the sun iron concentration as the worst same range as the, the sun manganese concentration in poor water during dry and wet season, which this research implied that the, the sun iron were subject to biogeochemical rosette and we suggest that a part of the sun iron may, may be precipitated in the trick. And this research is planning for the high particulate iron congestion, particulate iron congestion at low tide during dry and wet season, at low tide. And our hypothesis concerning the sun iron precipitation may be supported by positive correlation between local iron and BS associated with positive correlation between local iron and water level. In furthermore, the particular iron concentration in the tidal rig were maximum at low tide, resenting higher value than those measured in the Gengye estuary, confirm the our hypothesis of an input from the mangrove to the estuary, specifically at the site covered by mangrove only, for example, of iron here. And in summary of this content, uh, during ebb tide, the sun trace metal were exported from the mangrove sediment, and mangrove can be a ratio of the sun manganese for adjacent ecosystem. In the tidal risk, particularly, iron precipitated and were exported to the estuary. And finally, for the general conclusion, the main source of trace metal in the Gengye mangrove were later destroyed up Saigon and Dong Nai River water seas. Total surrender solids were proved to be the main carrier of for trace metal during their transport to the ocean. And trace metal distribution and partitioning in estuary chain chain due to the physical mixing with seawater and uh, biogeochemical rosettes. Gengye mangrove statement acted as a natural biogeochemical reactor modif inducing modification of trace metal bearing phase. And the bacterial reductive dissolution of oxygen hydroxide in mangrove sediment during mineralization of organic matter in suboxic condition released this sun trace metal in pore water. And the organic risk Mangrove sediment from the Musla to the Rhizophorastan play a key role on trace metal partitioning. And trace metal can be transferred from mangrove sediment and pore water into mangrove biota tissue via both active and passive process. The release air of trace metal concentration in snail tissue dependent on the availability of trace metal in their food and habitats. 
and the last one, the tidal rent and irregularity of tidal cycle, influence trace metal concentration in the rig by controlling the pore water seepage. And our, after our finding of my thesis, we shall get some research perspective, uh, in, including uh, to evaluate the seasonal effect on trace metal geochemistry in mangrove sediment and to estimate the trace metal budget in mangrove ecosystem and to assess the trace metal bioaccumulation in coastal tropic chain and comparison of trace metal is part with the other mangrove characterized by higher trace metal loss. And that's all my presentation to you tonight. Finally, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Du. Uh, your speech is about 45 minutes, so it is perfect. Now it's time for the jury to begin his work, and the first uh, man who speaks is you. Okay. Right, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Cyril and the University of Caledonia for inviting me here. Um, your presentation was very nice. Um, your methods are very solid. They're based on many years of development, and you took full advantage of having very good equipment, good methodology, and also your hard work. Mm -hmm. Because it was very obvious that you spent a lot of time, a lot of hard work to develop these chapters. One of your chapters is already published, and I think you could easily publish a couple more of those chapters. Thank you. Um, so I just, I just have a couple uh, points here, and then I'll go on to um, Andrea's... Um, she has a, some, a lot, quite a few comments here, more longer comments that you can respond to. I just have a couple direct um, comments about your okay. study. Um, first of all, the, the sediment chapters, one of your conclusions are that the mangrove sediments did not present high trace metal concentrations. Um, however, you're looking at, at um, concentrations. Do you think perhaps that that might be different if you were to look at fluxes, for example, you might have an increase in sediment accumulation in these 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 uh, these mangroves, and by that by that you would you would you could be increasing the fluxes, and then you would necessarily pick that up in the concentrations. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a possibility in this this uh, your study region? Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for your uh, question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand your question, and uh, you you say uh, we can calculate the metal plus from the mangrove. Because uh, yes. uh, when, yeah, when your, con when your um, conclusions were that the trace mm -hmm. metal concentrations were not elevated. Mm -hmm. However, perhaps if you were to look at the fluxes, that might have changed over time. Mm -hmm. So even though the, the concentrations may be misleading in this situation, if you're looking at um, in terms of total fluxes to the estuary or to the mangroves mm -hmm. or even to the ocean, yes. um, even though the concentrations didn't show any type of elevation, um, do you think perhaps if you were to look at fluxes, that might change over time? Because mm -hmm. you get more development, more land use, and perhaps more sediment being washed down the creeks, and your, your trace metals could increase in terms of fluxes. Do you think that would be a possibility in your study region? Mm -hmm. In uh, actually, uh, for my study, we did the measure in metal plus uh, from the uh, mangrove and from the river. Yes, and uh, however, with the, our fighting concerning to the trace metal concentration in the mangrove sediment and in the pore water. Uh, when we compare to the other uh, mangrove, tropical mangrove forest, for example, in the Australian mangrove, mm -hmm. and we found that the uh, trace metal uh, concentration uh, in the Kangya mangrove is higher, higher than those in uh, Australian mangrove, and uh, in the trace metal concentration in the pore water, especially for iron and manganese, is higher than those in the Australian mangrove. By uh, by study, uh, it's studied by the Holloway 2016, and uh, with our finding, we suggest that the mangrove can be a can be a thing up uh, can be a source of the trace metal in the estuary and the ocean. However, we need to more in detail to study in future because um, for my knowledge when we want to calculate the metal plus we need to measure the, the, the 
con the pour water, uh, the contribution of pour water is shown, and especially in my uh, presentation, I talk about the radon. The radon it can be used to quantify the relative contribution of pour water, and maybe in no, I'm, future I'm just, work. I'm, I'm, at this point right now, I'll get to the pour water in a minute, but I just want to talk about the the the, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the content in your in your soil your soil cores. Choice. In your sediment cores, did you see any difference along your cores in terms of uh, development, any signs of the development you, you mentioned in your thesis in terms of, because this is a, apparently a very highly impacted mm -hmm. a region. Did you see any type of um, signs of, uh, of development along your sediment cores? Along the core? Yes, the, sed the sediment, the yes. solid. Any, any type of enrichment factor? Did you um, notice any? Type of enrichments or anything? Yes, and uh, for my uh, study, we uh, distant uh, on uh, my thesis when I uh, submit to uh, the reviewer and the uh, UNC, uh, we didn't describe about the enrichment factor. Enrichment factor, which you mean? Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, can you repeat that? I understand. Yeah, and uh, for my uh, thesis, when I uh, send to you and uh, yeah. UNC, okay. uh, the enrichment factor. Yes. Okay. Yes, this not it is dry. But for the personal communication, mm -hmm. yes, and we already calculated uh, the enrichment factor yes, yes. Uh, for the sediment, for trace metal accumulation in sediment along the estuary. Mm -hmm. And we found that the anthropogenic pressure on the mangrove sediment is the minor. Yes, it, it looks like a minor shock. Mm -hmm. And especially only for the nickel and chromium, which have the enrichment factor less than 3 and more than uh, 0 0.5 mm -hmm. and it looks the onshore the moderate the moderate uh, pollution yeah mm -hmm. moderate pollution into the mangrove sediment okay yeah did you when you started the study did you expect to see uh, um, lots of trace metal enrichment in, the, in your soil cores was that one of your hypothesis that you would have a, uh, because of the developments that you mentioned would you, did you expect to have trace metal enrichment or contamination? Uh, sorry, could you repeat your answer? Because when you say uh, speak the lower, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, no, just yeah. when you when you when you took your soil cores when you started your study. Yes. Did you expect to mm -hmm. have lots of trace metal con contamination mm -hmm. in these mangrove soils? And when we start to study this thesis, and uh, we expect the mangrove sediment, mangrove can be a thing for the trace metal. Yeah. But after our finding, and we found out that mangrove is resented the not too high the metal concentration. However, we it's not can lose the mangrove. Uh, this not uh, cannot work as the thing for trace metal because when I uh, refer the publication from the study 2017 and uh, some publication about the uh, study about uh, concerning the trace metal accumulation in sediment in the center city, we found out after uh, proof into the river and trace metal can be locally deposited and we have the high trace metal concentration it's near the city center, and maybe that's why the region, and we, can, we have low trace metal concentration in the mangrove sediment. Yes, and when we compare the trace metal concentration in the sediment to the sediment, those measured in the sediment upstream of the Saigon River, when we found out it's the same range, and we suggest they can come from the natural shore as later it is soil. It's the more in the central highland of Vietnam. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, another question. At, now this one's about the time series. Um, from your time series observations, you show salinity didn't vary very much. Mm -hmm. Was didn't was not very variable. Mm -hmm. it, the variability was very low. Right. Is that correct? And then actually, one of the seasons you showed um, that there was actually higher salinity during uh, low tide. Astrotai injury. Yes, and can you explain that um, this variability? What's causing this this high salinity at low tide? High salinity, astrotai. Yes. 
um, for the um, high the Okay, sorry, please uh, wait a moment. <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of the seasons you showed higher salinity at low tide with the water depth was, um, with the lower water depth, the salinity was higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you uh, show me uh, where's the, uh, um, the, the finger? The fig if you show your time series figure? Yes. Can you, do, can you show that? Pi? Pi for two? Yeah. Mm-hmm, yes, tidal rig. Yes. Okay, thank you. Please wait a moment. Yes, okay. Yes, you see, you see that. Um, can you explain that um, high salinity at, at the lower water level? Uh, uh, when uh, we had the high, the, uh, the very uh, high the concentration, had a concentration at low tide, and uh, for for me, the, because uh, when we had the uh, in Vietnam, it's the subject to the semi diurnal uh, region. And we have the two big for the water level one day. Yes, and we have the, and every time uh, we have the lowest tidal water and we have the, the blow. Yes, and when we have the higher concentration at the lowest uh, water level, I think the, when we have the higher amplitude, higher, higher, um, Lower amplitude of the tidal range and some disjointed met some disjointed metal in the uh, can be chopped in the uh, in the sediment and when we have the chain the tidal range is characterized by lowest water level at slow tide and we have the trace metal can is blocked from the mangrove sediment and that's why we have the the different uh, trace metal concentration, different uh, tidal. No, I'm just. I'm not talking about the trace metals at this point. I'm just talking about this is salinity. 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 Yes. Salinity. Yeah. Uh, for salinity, because okay, sorry. From my study and. Uh, for the salinity, uh, I found that's the way. 1 moment no sorry no problem <laughs> yes we had a higher salinity at slow tide yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry can you explain and, uh, why? yes and uh, for me the the higher salinity at low tide may the missing of the salinity from the pore water and the tidal uh, 
the title water, yes, in the title rig. And in the, when we measure the salinity in the uh, sediment core, we have the higher value in salinity than in the, the rich water. Yes, and I think at low tide, it is part from the mangrove sediment in through the poor water seepage. So it seems yeah. like you're getting some um, poor water recirculation mm -hmm. type. So um, the question is, you don't really get a flushing of this poor water. So the impression I get, it, it, just, it seems like this, this water is just maybe moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that you get an, a flux, a flux, a net flux going out or in of these trace metals? Mm. Because you don't have a, a flushing or you don't have uh, what you haven't calculated uh, an, a, a flux in either direction. Mm -hmm. What you could be doing, seeing is it's this water body moving back and forth as the water level goes up and down. Yes. And you're just maybe just it's getting the, displaced the metals further down creek and then higher tide coming back. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how can you come to the conclusion that you have a, a poor water flux in a specific direction? Um, for me, when uh, the sun is the uplot into the sediment, and maybe it's the effect on the trace metal uh, balance phase, trace metal uh, bound to the exchangeable, exchangeable uh, fashion. Yes, and uh, some trace metal, for example, it's not just right in my uh, thesis, for example, barium or uh, cadmium, mm -hmm. they, can, they, can, they can form the uh, floral complex with the the cadmium and we can they can is replace the distant cadmium in the, into the pore water and some for the barium uh, barium we have the competition of the cation cation cationate with the barium in the exchangeable, exchangeable phase and that may affect to the the the, the trace metal concentration in the pore water Yes, yeah, it's some trace metal can affect by the, the the salinity increase. I think so. Yes, I, I can understand this, the the reactions you're, you're talking about, but um, my, my question is about the flux overall flux. flux? If it's going, because since you get to these higher salinities, it seems like you're getting recirculation of this pore water. Mm -hmm. So it's maybe coming out, but it's going back in. It's just recirculating. That's kind of the impression I got. And the, which brings me to the point: Do you have all this nice uh, radon data? Why don't you do a, a radon mass balance to, to determine the, the flux uh, from the pore water? And now uh, for uh, f on my thesis, you uh, cannot see the radon mass balance. Yeah, and uh, actually the mass balance will will be will be due for another paper from the my colleague. He is the PhD student of Shirin, and he already published and. Uh, okay. On this paper, uh, on this my uh, thesis, I did not describe about the radon, and also I did not calculate the metal blood from the pore water. And it, next time when I correct this the chapter and improve more, and maybe I will calculate the metal blood based on the pore water discharge from the my college, yes. and I can calculate the metal blood and to be support for our hypothesis about the mangrove can be a short uh, member, maybe a thing for the chain metal. Which you could just, you could just use his, his pore water, his uh, pore water flux rates. Pore water apply plus. those to your, your um, mm -hmm. um, trace metal yes. concentrations in the pore water and you get mm -hmm. a trace metal flux. Yes, and I have nice. already have the trace metal concentration in pore water, yep. trace metal concentration in the water column, and we can calculate the Metal blood. Yes, you could also maybe get a uh, groundwater end member as well. I don't know <laughs> if you took any wells or any <laughs> type of. Yeah. So yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be nice. Um, yeah, so those are my the, the basic questions I had. Like I said, I thought you have very nice methodology, very good job. Mm -hmm. This is a couple of little details, questions I had there. Yes, and now you. I'll go on to uh, Andrea. She has a little more broader type, type of comments here. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go ahead and read off what, what she um, sent to me. Um, perhaps the candidate could reflect and comment on what further work could be done to answer such mechanistic questions in future studies. And for, okay, first thank you for the uh, Andrea question <laughs> on those uh, absent to the session tonight. And I, 
understand her question, maybe concerning my last uh, slide here. And I will discuss more detail, more in detail. So, sorry, really wait a moment. There's some problem with my computer. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure, okay, sorry. Yes, and I think she want to, she was like to ask me about the research purpose too, and she needs me to explain more information uh, why we, 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 we need to, to do the future work. How, how do you how? Do you relate to future yes. work, yes. And, uh, for for her question, uh, despite the uh, I I search I search as the for future work in the future, but for me uh, it's very important uh, to 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 it to evaluate the trace metal bio accumulation in the coastal traffic chain. Yes, and uh, to do this, and uh, we need to first we need to to do the step, calculate the metal blood from the mangrove to be sure the mangrove is the, can act as the sink of the metal or the shock of the metal. Because uh, for our finding, we can see the high concentration of the trace metal in a viable fraction and high uh, trace metal in the pore water. They can export to the water column and they can accumulate to the first traffic level, for example, myroenry or phytolongtong, and if they, they, were, they are exported to the, the sea, maybe they, they can accumulate to the sea rust, yeah, and maybe trace metal can be a threat for the higher, for the top traffic level, and especially for the human health. And we need to collect the the sample, uh, for sample, the phytolongtong, the anris, and shiraz, and we need to collect, for sample, the fish and something in the food chain, food web, to analyze and confirm and identify the the effect of the trace metal in the food web. I think so. Yeah. Okay. The second question she has. Based on your results, what do you think the most important, significant anthropogenic sources of of trace metals? Why and how would you further investigate this in more detail? Okay, thank you. And for my presentation, for trace metal partitioning in the in the tie, in the the estuary, we already already showed you uh, about the high concentration of particulate metal in the Actually, sorry. Yes, and uh, along in the Ho Chi Minh City and uh, along the Dom Nai River, there are many the industrial zone, industrial and chemical uh, plant. Yeah, and uh, from my our knowledge, maybe there are 200 industrial area along the Saigon River and Dong Nai River in the upstream of the Cần Dia estuary. And uh, there's uh, some uh, factory, uh, they, uh, they work on the uh, ten, the tet, uh, the tet Thai uh, industry and ten in the industry. Yeah, and maybe a lot of the chromium and uh, nickel, that especially for chromium can be used and maybe a main source for the premium in the estuary. And there's many, the electronic uh, company and uh, for the uh, plating, plating uh, activity. And maybe the copper and the nickel can be released into the estuary. And then for me, the main source may come from the industrial area and industrial, the chemical company. Yeah, and especially it's higher at the Taiwan during the rainy season. When we compare the condition, we suggest that maybe the mud up from the runoff, yeah, during the rainy season, runoff from the traffic draws or the landfill from the 
city center uh, near or some area around the city center. Yeah, at the upstream of the uh, Kangyo Man Road. Okay. Yes. And can you please discuss potential reasons for the general lack of strong seasonal patterns in your data? And why these patterns may be different from those in other parts of the world? Yes, and sorry for my research for our finding. And we emphasize the seasonal effect on the trace metal and physical chemical parameter between dry and wet season. Yes, especially SI1, as I show you. And this is the seasonal effect were described in my thesis. And for the unreached question, she asked the lack of the seasonal pattern. Yes, and I don't understand her question because for my research, we have the different, yeah, and we have the seasonal effect on the trace metal and physical chemical parameter. And you could you please repeat the last the question? Yes, we have to pack about the, the seasonal patterns and why these patterns may be different from those in, in other parts of the world. And I think it's the different from the other uh, other park on the work, and maybe the Kangyaman Road is located at the near the city center, city center, and with the urban uh, urban and uh, human activity, they can directly affect on the artery, and we have the the different uh, anthropogenic structure on the the artery than those in the park of the work. It's actually for this question, yeah, I uh, I cannot find another answer to adapt her uh, question. <laughs> okay, I'll go to the next one. Yeah. Um, are there other indices such as RAC that can come out of your thesis work that could be used for mangrove management practices? Mm, yes, uh, actually uh, for for the index, the uh, risk assessment, uh, risk assessment cost. Yeah, we describe in my thesis, but on this the finger on this the, on my presentation here, I have not enough time to show on. And uh, actually, for the uh, RIC uh, index, it can calculated from the trace metal in the exchangeable carbonate phase to the total metal concentration in the sediment. Yes, and uh, Professor Anfaro, she asked me, uh, there's the order in this. And I think to, we can use the enrichment factor to enrichment factor to, to evaluate the anthropogenic uh, input to the mangrove sediment. When we have the high enrichment factor, it means the mangrove sediment may be uh, receive, maybe receive a lot of the anthropogenic input and we should have the solution. We have a solution to for the practical uh, management uh, practice uh, of the mangrove. I think so. Yeah, we can use the enrichment factor because for the enrichment factor, we can differentiate the anthropogenic input and natural background of the trace metal in the sediment. I think so. It's the same, same. But for the RIC, we only use the trace metal concentration in the exchangeable carbonate power. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, another question. Can you please discuss in more detail the trends between mangrove stands and mudflats in the, in, in the global context? Okay. <laughs> I think in the global context, and especially for the tropical mangrove, if we have the same the distribution of the mangrove plants, and we have the the same, and I I would suggest that we have the same the, the same behavior of the trace metal in the mangrove sediment, because we have the higher productivity in the mangrove stand than in the mudflat. And I think the, for the, in the global context or in the other mangrove, tropical mangrove, we have the same because the organic compound 
organic matter in the sediment play a key role for the dust metal partitioning, and I think it's either we have the same. And for uh, and for sample in New Guinea, it may be it's different. Yeah, in New Guinea, yeah, because we have different distribution of plants, and we only have the mangrove stand and sun blast. It's not the most flat, but for the own tropical mangrove. I think with the same distribution of plant, plant species, we have the same pattern and the same behavior of the trace metal on, in the sediment. Thank you. Another thing you might think about too is in the, in the mangroves, the, the, the sediment accumulation rates are more regulated mm -hmm. by the plants, whereas in the mudflats you can get erosions or high accretion rates. So the actual, the, the trees themselves kind of can regulate the, the soil mm -hmm. accretion. Of the of the um, of this these two comparing yes. these two systems and and I think when we have the uh, you want to 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 talk about the aviation aviation of the uh, sediment Just in so, terms yes. of the, the accumulation rates between the, the okay. mud flats and the and the mangroves themselves yes and yes and actually maybe we have the different the between the trace metal in the mud flat and the Mangrove stain. It depends on the location of the <laughs> of the, the, the mangrove. <laughs> All right. Next one. Can you please discuss the broader implications of the observed metal distributions with respects to the effects of trophic levels and food web dynamics in this ecosystem and adjacent habitats? Yes, and it is it's same same. There, my answer when I explained earlier. Yes, and uh, I think for our fighting with higher, uh, higher, higher, high concentration of metal in the say available fraction in the sediment and high trace metal concentration in the pore water. Yes, and which get that they can release into the water column, and they can accumulate into the first trophic level, and they can by all magnify into the top traffic level and especially for the human. Yeah, I think so. And that's why in the, my research perspective, we suggest about the trade accumulation in the trace metal in the food web, yeah, to estimate. Okay, thanks. Yeah. One more. Please discuss how your results may differ from those habitats within different sediment, grain size, and organic contents such as those observed in other countries. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, for in the Kangyo Manvro, uh, that's located at the downstream of the Saigon and Damla River, and most of the high proportion of the Sioux and Klai in their sediment. And Anne the Professor Anne Farrow, she, uh, she want to emphasize about the different uh, brand size and organic content. And I think, I, I suggest that when we have the different the brand size, maybe we have the different the oxygen, uh, oxygen uh, release into the sediment. And when we have the lower organic content, maybe it affects on the redox siling, and that may affect to the reductive dissolution of the trace metal bedding phase, and maybe it affects on the trace metal release from the pore water of mangrove sediment to the, to the water column. Yeah, I think so. When we have the different the, the inside. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. That was all her Thank questions. you so much. Thank you. Merci. Chu. Yes. Um, well, it's not easy to be the last one to ask questions. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> but first of all, I'd like to... <laughs> still more people. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on a very solid piece of work. Um, the amount of work is tremendous, and I can see that the uh, level of difficulty of connecting and analyzing that, uh, those samples mm -hmm. is actually a substantial job. So very well done. Um, I'd like to follow on with Dr. Sanders, one of Dr. Sanders' questions, um, but in a slightly different way. Um, one of the surprises that I've actually found reading your thesis 
is your conclusion that um, the metal pool Micro. in the mangroves mm -hmm. is largely natural. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not derived from human sources mm -hmm. that much. So we're talking about a city with 10 million people, as you said, mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, past histories in urbanization, industrialization, and for example, um, killing off the, off the mangrove forest in the past, in the war. Um, but your conclusion is that the metal pool, whether it's actually iron or chromium or nickel and so on, all these were basically derived from natural sources. Natural. I, I would believe you, but I, I ask you one question. Yes. Um, you actually sampled some cores. Uh, this is where I actually go back to Dr. Sanders' question. Mm -hmm. So you collected some sediment cores yes. at different parts of the mangrove forest mm -hmm. and also just outside of the forest. Um, I know that you didn't analyze the, um, for example, the, the carbon content or the uh, stable isotope yes. values of carbon or nitrogen mm -hmm. from those core samples, but you measured, for example, the metal content uh, at different levels and mm -hmm. so on. If you actually did measure mm -hmm. the carbon content, nitrogen content, and also the isotopic content, uh, values mm -hmm. of particularly nitrogen mm -hmm. of those core samples yes. and different times accumulated in the past, yes. we know that, for example, the deeper the core layer, mm -hmm. then the earlier the samples were deposited, mm -hmm. the sediment. If you actually had analyzed those values and the metal content associated with those layers of soil and sediment, then can you tell me whether you could actually use those data, mm -hmm. if you had them, use those data to actually answer the question whether or not anthropogenic mm -hmm. human sources, like from industries, mm -hmm. from sewage and so on, would have affected or contributed to your metal um, profiles? Mm -hmm. yes. Do you ans uh, <laughs> understand my question? Yeah. Yes, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor Lee. And uh, for me, uh, I understand your your means, and uh, we can measure the nitrogen or um, carbon, as a table as the top carbon and nitrogen to measure the age of the sediment. Yes, it means the, the dating of the sediment. And uh, you probably cannot mm -hmm. know the date just by measuring those values. That's a separate thing. Even if we do not date the mm -hmm. different layers, um, because it's expensive and so on, yes. we know that the earlier layers in in the past mm -hmm. would have been lower down, and unless there is a lot of bioturbation and and resuspension and so on, um, but let's assume that the earlier layers would be lower down and yes. the more recent layers would be near the surface, and if you had the data on the isotopic values, for mm -hmm. example, of nitrogen and carbon and so on, and you have the metal data too for the different layers, would you be able to tell whether human sources like sewage, like industries and so on, have contributed to the metal pool? Okay, for, uh, thank you. And uh, for your question, I think we, if I have the data from the, 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 the carbon and nitrogen and along the, the, the score, yes, and uh, we can identify the, identify the, 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 the dating of the, the sediment and they can come from the, with the anthropogenic pressure, anthropogenic uh, activity, or they can come from the natural shock, yes. And uh, for me, uh, when we have the, because the, for the table, uh, for example, when we measure the table, table isotope of the nitrogen and carbon, and uh, we can spy on the, 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 the proportion, proportion of the, this isotope, uh, and we can conclude, we can infer about the, the, the status of the sediment they early they were deposited 
from the anthropogenic activity or uh, 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 natural shock. However, for when we want to measure, and we have the another way to to to, to measure the anthropogenic, we can use the table I showed up of the trace metal on show, and we can collect the sample. It's near. It's the uh, it's the upstream of the in the central highland, and we can collect it, the sediment sample or the water sample. It's the near the industrial area. We can analyze the isotope table isotope of trace metal, and we collect the sample in the mangrove sediment core along the core, and we can analyze the table isotope and based on the the the, the isotope ratio of the trace metal, we can can lose, we can infer the the, the short input the the the, 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 the manro, I think so. Yes and actually for the when we use the carbon or nitrogen um I have no I have not too much the idea about the <laughs> about the, the 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 data from the carbon and uh, nitrogen. I'm sorry. Yeah. But for me I had the understand we have another way to measure the anthropogenic input in the sediment. Mm. Yeah. Based on the isotope of trace metal. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would have thought that uh, maybe uh, the uh, delta nitrogen 15 value could actually shed some light on the relative importance of uh, things like sewage um, on the source of trace metals yes. in your in your core samples. Mm -hmm. But um, well, that's actually uh, something maybe for the future. Um, yeah, and the the other questions I have are to do with your uh, estimation of risk, risk to to say, for example, human beings mm -hmm. um, of these trace metals present in the system. Yes. So you analyzed the content of metals in some animals, uh, the snails, yes. right? These are good choices mm -hmm. because snails are very common in the mangrove ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, but can you tell me why you didn't, for example, measure the content of uh, metals in one of the most common types of organisms in the, uh, in the, in the ecosystem? For example, this is sesame crabs. <laughs> Because the reason why I ask is my impression visiting that part of Vietnam is yes. that these crabs, they're small, they feed on uh, leaves and detritus and so on, and the sediment as yes. well. And apparently people collect them as food, yes. right? Yes. And they pickle them and eat them. Yes. And so if you are to actually estimate the risk mm -hmm. of exposure yes. uh, of humans to mm -hmm the mangrove metals, yes. mm -hmm. then that could be or would yeah. be a very good choice yes. to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a particular reason why you didn't do that? Um, actually, for my thesis, during my thesis, I didn't do the graph because when we carry out my study and we expect we can use the snail to be an indicator for taste of the trace metal contamination, because the many publication they use the snail as the indicator for the metal pollutant in the sediment, and we only focus on the snail and especially for you uh, follow your mean uh, frap, uh, they can be used a lot as food for the people for the human and snail also in the <laughs> in the mangrove yes, and they can be they can be used as food for the local people and for the economic uh, development for the the local people can collect the snail and they can they can uh, sell to the other people yes and uh, i agree with you in my thesis with the lack of to measure the trace metal in the rat to be feel the on the picture of the trace metal accumulation in the popular animal in the mangrove forest. And I think it's the really further work <laughs> for, for me, uh, someone later, I think so. And first, I, 
I, I emphasize again, first we want to, based on the my data on the snail, we can some idea about the snail. We can use them as the indicator for pollution, and they can be useful to to you for the management uh, of the mangrove. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's on for my my study. Yes, and my answer to you. Right. Yeah. Um, that's probably fair enough. Um, the the four snail species that you snails? used. Yeah. Uh, to measure the metal contents of. Um, three of them are actually lower trophy level consumers, and one of them is actually a predator, okay? And the, the three snails that are at a trophic level, mm -hmm. lower trophy level, I actually, I would consider them mostly being grazers, um, and either on the tree, mm -hmm. Nitoraria, yes. or on the sediment surface, mm -hmm. uh, the other two species. And strictly speaking, none of them is actually a detritivore. That is, they don't feed specifically on dead plant material. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are actually some snails that specialize in feeding on, say, like mangrove detritus. Yes. And um, these are snails that are uh, mostly pulmonase, yes. which we that is, they breathe, uh, they mm -hmm. breathe using the lungs, mm -hmm. and they occur mostly at the high end of the mangrove forest. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you actually had sampled them, mm -hmm. these are strict detritivores, um, almost like the mangrove crabs, mm -hmm. um, then would you expect the, the, the data would be different from the other three snails, which are mostly grazers? Uh, feeding on the microalgae, on the surface of leaves, mm. um, the fungi, or the sediment surface. Yes. Based on your knowledge about how these trace metals would be partitioning between, say, the sediment, the water, and organic matter, and so on. If we had sample a strict detritivore, mm -hmm. which feeds on dead leaves, as opposed to grazing on the sediment surface on for, for microalgae? Um, in my thesis, uh, we did then uh, collected the micro and re, yes. And if for uh, your mean, I understand, uh, you refer, if we have some, the, we have some suggestions about the trace metal in the micro and re, based on the stage metal in the sediment and in the water? Is that such a you mean? Uh, Sorry? Not just that, but uh, mm -hmm. detritus particles, they are basically, well, larger piece of POC, P -O -C. P -O -M, yeah. yes. And so you, you have actually done a lot of work mm -hmm. um, on how the metals may be associated with yes. POM. Yeah, yes. as opposed to being in the water and maybe in the sediment and mm -hmm. so on. So if you actually have sampled a strict detritivore which feeds on the POM mm -hmm. and not much else, mm -hmm. uh, how would that compare with your data on the snails which feed on the microalgae, like the ones that you have sampled? Mm -hmm. And. Uh is the it's because uh, we have the high affinity of the trace matter with the organic matter, yes. And uh, I think if we uh, collect this from the sample from the POM, particularly organic matter, and uh, some sample a fish, you mean? And uh, when we analyze the trace matter in uh, in fish, maybe we have the, some different uh, results. I think so. Uh, because the fish, the fish, they are the the higher traffic level than the snail, yeah, from my knowledge, and they can bio trace metal can bio magnify into the fish tissue, and uh, maybe trace metal in fish we have a higher concentration than the the snail uh, or something with the lower traffic level. I think so. 
that's about all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Now it's time for Cyril. First, Neil, I'd like to congratulate you. Today you did, you present us a very nice talk. Uh, we understand that it's not easy for you to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Because I would like to say that uh, four years ago when I met you for the first time, your English skills were really limited. And the deal between us was that if you want to do a PhD thesis with me, you must develop your English skill. And so you learn mm -hmm. and you, now you can write English very good. And I also would like to congratulate you for, for this. So just for the member of the jury, I would like you to say that you are a very hard worker. You did a very good job in the field, but also in the lab. You can work hard in the evening, during the weekend, and you can also work as a team. Because on this mangrove in Kangyo, you work with Mr. Vin, but also with David, uh, Frank, and with Pierre. And you all work together on this mangrove, always with the, the team spirit, helping the other student. So I really appreciated the way you work with the people. Um, so in your PhD, you have four different chapters and you learn different things, trace metal dynamic in the water, in the sediment, the transfer. It's, it's wide range of um, skills that you develop and you worked on. So again, congratulations for this. It, it's not easy and you deal with everything. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be your, your supervisor and again, you did a good job. I have just two short questions for you. Um, if you would like to develop a scientific project between New Caledonia and Vietnam, what would you do? Uh, actually, uh, for the, uh, my research, uh, I suggest some of the research uh, perspective. And actually, I already finished the sampling in the New Caledonia and in two mangroves in New Caledonia, Tomo Mangrove and Lafour Mangrove. And we already analyzed all the data, and we have now I have all the data on the chain metal in the water, in the sediment for the sequential attraction from the sequential attraction, and uh, for in future work we want to compare the behavior of the trace metal in the mangrove sediment in Nicaragua and in Vietnam because we have the different the limes and different the. Uh, the distribution of the the plants, mangrove plant in the mangrove, and we expect that there are some different, and we can feel the rough in the global context, yeah, in the future, yeah. Okay, and concerning what you did in the last three years, mm -hmm. if you wanted to do something else, or if you have wanted to do it differently, let's imagine that. Now, today, you can start your PhD from zero. <laughs> do you do exactly the same, or do you do something differently? Did you do something, would you do something else, or? Sure, I will work differently. <laughs> yes, and I, I had to work with the high level, yeah. Because after a long time, um, four years, almost four years, I worked with uh, Shireen and my supervisor, Dr. Yi Chang, and I cleaned a lot of them. They a lot the scientific uh, scientific uh, skill to me and I learn a lot and they spend a lot of time for me and here again I thank you very much for on your support during my time for this my PhD and I'm very happy to be the your PhD student. <laughs> thank you very much Nu and for me the most important thing is the way you develop your skills, yes. your scientific skills, your English yes. skills. Yes. And uh, thank you again. So now the other supervisor will ask some questions because I arrived in Vietnam four years ago mm -hmm. and the first scientist I met is uh, Miss Chan. So she's the other supervisor of Mr. Nyo. And then we also work with Emily. Emily, she's an IOD scientist, very good IOD scientist and she's based in Vietnam and she helped us a lot. So I would like to thank both of them and I really enjoy working with them. They are very nice young ladies. Okay, eh bien, now it is time for Chan to speak after this uh, good uh, 
words for Cyril to Chan and also for his colleague of IRD. Tu nous entends, Chan Non Émilie, tu nous entends Oui, Émilie, elle nous entend. Voilà, Tian, on t'entend. Parfait. Tu peux parler, Tian. C'est bon. <laughs> OK. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, hello, everyone. And uh, special um, hello to Dr. Lee. Uh, do you remember we organized um, the workshop on the mangrove on October uh, 2013? Yeah. The first time you were met uh, together and discussed about the mangrove. And I discovered the mangrove at that time with uh, with you, Serene, and all of you. And um, after that, we have uh, signed the first um, agreement, cooperation agreement with uh, IRT Institute for Research for Development, uh, with my uh, our university, University of Science. And uh, thanks to uh, this uh, agreement. We now have obtained um, the scho a scholarship uh, to uh, to do to perform his uh, thesis in Vietnam and in uh, New Canada uh, with uh, uh, Siri, uh, Dr. Cyril Ma uh, Marshall. And um, I thank you. Firstly, I would like to thank Cyril uh, for your. Um, I don't know if they have to explain it for your um, contribution, for your uh, idea, for your uh, effort. Uh, all of things when we work together, and especially uh, to Nyan, because when, as you said uh, uh, before, the, you know, the firstly, when you first um, time he, he worked with you, um, Many things need not 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 the same like now. When I heard uh, his present uh, today, uh, I'm very proud uh, of him and uh, proud of our work uh, together to support uh, to he learned many things. And I would like to thank uh, very much uh, many thanks to Dr. Emily Study. Uh, she she worked uh, with us and she uh, thank you for. Uh, um, her support and her contribution, and it uh, uh, not only in this uh, thesis, but also for all the research we do. Uh, he 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 maintained, he performed in Vietnam, in South Vietnam, because you know that in South Vietnam, in the, um, the biggest city in uh, Vietnam, but. Uh, the mangrove and the river, we like uh, many uh, study, uh, studies about uh, the pollution, and especially not only for metal pollution, but, but also for other compounds. And mangroves, uh, uh, Kandia mangroves is a zone very important for the Ho Chi Minh City. So we need to uh, develop and more and more about uh, many research on this. And uh, on not only um, because uh, not only for chemistry, but another um, another um, uh, domains. So uh, for Nyor, I have um, Nyor is my uh, um, assistant teacher as you teacher already in our department uh, of the analytical chemistry. Uh, he's worked on this for five. I think for more than five years, and when um, he, he has um, always uh, uh, the wills to do, to learn more, to study, and he's uh, um, he do very hard and uh, to try to um, overcome the, his um, difficult of problems on the language and. Um, a knowledge and uh, how to maintain the research. So uh, today uh, he he presents uh, um, the result, the fruit after her, her study, and uh, I think uh, he um, 
he learned the things and uh, the future the more for his future richers uh, or careers officials i think we need to uh, support him more to um, and uh, not only for him and for our um, uh, department on our university and to continue to, uh, our uh, con uh, cooperation and to develop uh, more interesting uh, research in the future so uh, the last, uh, the last thing uh, I uh, would like to say uh, to talk to, to you, and um, mm, we, if uh, I would like to, uh, we can work together to continue the, this work, because as Dr. Lee asked the question to you, uh, that uh, um, the one thing very important now we need to distinct or uh, identify the source of the pollution. It's because uh, the Saigong River and the Nai River come, uh, go through uh, the two big zones in south of Vietnam, either shore and uh, with um, very dense um, population. So we need to distinct the source of the pollution. This will help to the city to control uh, their activities uh, also. So uh, if you can go on to, on this act, I think it's a very important for us and for our research. So thank you very much for all of you and uh, especially for Sirin and Emily. Thank you, INZ also. Thank you. Émilie, si tu veux bien intervenir, c'est à toi. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me for the, as a member of the jury. First, you know, I would like to congratulate you. I'm very proud of what you've done. Uh, as Cyril and uh, Nutian said, you've done a very hard work from the beginning when we met four years ago. Now, you learn a lot about analytical, the lab about sampling, and a lot about discussion. When you began, you were not able to discuss about trace metal in water, in an estuary, in sediment, and now you can write a PhD thesis, so it's a very good job that you have done. Um, I would like to tell you that I consider you as my student, even if officially I'm not, but you're like my first PhD student to me, and I really enjoy working with you. You were always in a good mood, always smiling, and it's very, very easy and very, I mean, yeah, very easy to work with you. So thank you for that. Um, as you know, I have many projects about trace metal in the Saigon and Dongna River, many data, and I'm sure that in the next few months, next few years, we will still collaborate on it. And we will be able to, to reply to the question that the, the jury asked you today um, about fluxes, about sources, about enrichment factor in the sediments. So, I hope that in the next future we will, we will do that together. You had already a lot of questions, so I won't uh, ask more, but I, I'm sure that when you will be back in Vietnam, you will have a lot of questions regarding how the city is contaminated the more. And you need to be prepared to, to answer this question. Does the city have an impact on the long run? How? And do we need to, to improve the treatment of this water, this wastewater, urban industrial wastewater? So I think this is a um, big Well, you have to think about all of this because many people will ask you about the impact of the city in this moment. So it's a very big question scientifically, but also I will say in the local context. 
but I'm sure that you will deal with that. So congratulations again. And thank you for Stephen and, and Lee Chang also for the collaboration, great collaboration. Thank you. Um, now it's me. It's time for me to speak. Um, a lot of things have already been said. I try to be brief, but I have some questions and some remarks on your job. First, as the other member of the jury, I congratulate, congratulate you for this job, for the good quality of your work. Made in New Caledonia and Vietnam, it was a challenge to work on your subject. And for me, this challenge is successful. The oral presentation was also of quality with clear and well illustrated slide in order to explain us and to the assistants what is your job. Uh, so for that, I say to you, it is a good job for me, <laughs> a very good job for me. Uh, remarks for the geologist. As Joe, I think it will be very interesting to investigate the level of the past in order to have comparison with the level you have studied in your uh, work. I think it is very interesting, interesting things and I hope you can make that in the future. Okay, it is a remark from, for the geologist. And two questions now for the neo caledonian people. <laughs> you have worked both in Vietnam and in New Caledonia. And my small questions are about the comparison of these two countries. You know that some mangrove soils in New Caledonia are very rich in nickel and also in fer because of the mining activities. Mm -hmm. Do you think that trust metal export can be higher than, it, than in Vietnam? And the second part of this double question is, do you think that mangrove can be a source of FA for the lagoon. Okay. Uh, could I answer your question now? Uh, I'm waiting for you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Michel Alan Bass, uh, for your question. Uh, and you, uh, want, you just said about the uh, nickel in uh, New Caledonia. And in the mandro sediment in uh, New Caledonia, there's a high concentration of uh, nickel. Yes. And uh, when I compare, yes, when I compare the my study, my finding in the Gangya mandro sediment, and compare to the Machan uh, publication in New Caledonia, I found out the nickel in the Nickel in the, the sediment and pore water in New Guinea were ha far higher than in the those measure in the Kenya mangrove forest. Yes, and we suggest that the nickel, the uh, nickel can spark to the water column with the high concentration. However, with the our our observation in the Lafoua, uh, Lafoua mangrove and Tomo mangrove. And uh, we found that at the low tide, the first we expect the nickel. We suggest the nickel can spark the high concentration into the water column. But when we measure the nickel, 
this one is grow in the water column in the tidal risk in the lab four and the tomo with there's uh, not they did not resent did not resent the high concentration and I think the spark of the trace metal in New Guinea may strong affected by the tidal is tidal rain yes by the tidal rain and in Vietnam and New Guinea we have the different the tidal 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 resin. In Vietnam, it's semi diurnal resin, but in Ukraine, we have diurnal resin. And we have the, in Ukraine, the tidal brand is lower amplitude than in the Vietnam. And in our finding, we suggest that the tidal brand and irregularity of the tidal cycle affect the trace metal is part to the water column. And I think we need to more survey about the Trace metal in the nuclear area to conclude about your your question, and now with my finding, we found out that no higher concentration in the water cooler than in the Vietnam. On those, we have the high concentration is nickel in the sediment and pore water. Yes. The second question is on climate on the west coast of New Caledonia. The climate is really dry, with a few rainfall, very few rainfall. What would be in the influence of the climate on mangrove sediment geochemistry compared to the Vietnam? And do you think that it can influence the export of truss metals in the lagoon, to the lagoon? Uh, sorry, Professor Mitchell. Yes. Could you repeat the first paragraph? The, mm, sorry, I cannot understand. The west coast of the New Caledonia is very dry, yes. with no rainfall. What would be the influence of the climate, of the this climate, climate yes. on mangrove sediment geochemistry compared to the Vietnam, to, to Vietnam? So if you have to compare, yeah, what can you say? Mm. Yes, thank you for your question. And uh, actually, I, for my knowledge, I found that in New Caledonia, the rainfall is lower than in Vietnam. In Vietnam, we have the high precipitation per year. And f when we have the high the precipitation, uh, that may in fact on the oxy uh, redox potential of the sediment. And especially for the, in the New Caledonia, May, uh, maybe we have the different the rain size between Vietnam and New Caledonia, and for the, when we have the different rain size, then different the precipitation, the rainfall between Vietnam and New Guinea, it may affect on the redox potential, and they have, and especially for the organic carbon, and when we measure some the total organic carbon in the sediment core in the New Kidunia and sediment cost in the Gangyaman Pro, in the New Kidunia, especially in the Pinnace, the Rhizo Forest Line, we had a higher concentration of the total organic carbon than in the Rhizo Forest in Vietnam. And this, this research may affect to the trace metal, uh, geochemical process, especially for redox siling, and may affect to the trace metal partitioning in the sediment. That's my answer to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's perfect for me. You have answer now. We have uh, had a long time to to speak with a lot of questions, yes. a, a lot of comments, mm -hmm. and I would at least because I am the president of this jury congr congratulate you for your expose, and now it's it's time for the jury to discuss yes. for your job. So yes. I invite all the public to go out of the uh, amphitheater and we, we can maybe have the result in the 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Okay? Thank you very much. Bravo. Thank you very much.